Hello everybody. My name is Beverly. Today is June 6, 2023. And it's time for a garden update. I'm going to start here where I am. This is strawberries. This is, um, you see these flowers are different. Usually flowers on strawberries are white. But these are um, reddish, rosy colored. And there's another one over there that's pink. Let me see if I can zoom in. Bought those at the same time, at the same place. Got them at Lowe's. They're um, Bonnie. That's a brand bonnie anyway um the strawberries that they make are kind of a uh, bullet shaped and they're not that good they're not that good but that one's a little more normal shape you can see that one but um i might have too many packed in here i think i, <laughs> I probably planted five of them in here Looks like I did. Anyway, they're the ones I tasted. They're just not sweet, and they don't really have a good flavor. Had a couple of them off of this one. Pretty though, super pretty. But I didn't put you here to be pretty. Very, very pretty. Beautiful color. But the fruit is funny shaped and not good. So they probably like attract a lot of people to buy them just because of that beautiful flower. But it's probably like a marketing gimmick because they're, they're not that good. And then in all fairness, I have to say the strawberries that I bought last year, I bought them from a local nursery that we have. Uh, they were, they weren't good last year. But when they came back this year, they were delicious. So, at the end of the season last year, I had um, four June berries, June bearing strawberries. Plants, I bought probably bought more than that, but those are the ones that I saved. And um, I didn't allow any runners or anything, but. So what happened, I put them inside this container, if you can see. It's probably, I don't know, two and a half feet across. Maybe three, but anyway, I got it at uh, Home Goods. Marshall's Home Goods. It's only like 25 bucks. I thought it was pretty cool. It says cold drinks on it. Anyway, that's not the point. I drilled some holes in it. I went and got a special drill bit that can go through metal from Lowe's. And I drilled some holes in it. And I filled it up with stuff I thought <laughs> nourish it and then in the fall after these i cut the rest of the berries off because it had berries on it i i was just impatient and i cut them off um and packed it in here put them in here so i don't know how many i put in there but there's four in there now they lived through the whole winter now you can see this patio is kind of sunken in and it's a pretty big container, so it was, you know, insulated enough that the roots lived. And they came back. When the warm weather was here consistently, they started coming back. And the berries are delicious, and they were not delicious last year at all. So, you know, maybe it's the same thing with, with these colorful ones. I don't know. You know, I'm not, it's not like I'm going to kill them or anything, but so... The, you see the colorful ones, those are new. Like I said, I just bought those. 
but in the other things lived through the winter. This one lived really well, like the ones in the other pot. This one came from a different pot. And when it lived through the winter, I just moved it over here because nothing else that was in those other strawberries didn't live. These lived, that little thing and that little thing, but they looked like they were dead and there was another one that was dead I pulled out anyway. Uh, there's a few little teeny weird looking misshapen berries on it. Oh, so ants or something. I tried to put them on the edge so they could hang over the edge, but that didn't quite make it. Those are the first real berries to come off of that one. It's a different variety. It's called Everbearing, which means they give strawberries all season. Um, then the other ones in the other container were all June bearings, which means they produce one big crop. So I haven't been, had a chance to really taste those yet, these ever bearings. So we'll see. And these are just now coming to life, these little bitty ones. So we'll see. No flowers on them yet or anything, but this one's already making berries. There's my little herb garden. Probably could use a little water. I'll show you how you can test and see if your stuff needs water. First of all, stuff in pots is gonna need watered way more than stuff that's in the ground. Stuff that's in clay pots is gonna need watered more than a colored pot or a plastic pot or, this is a clay pot, but it's glazed. This one's glazed. So that's gonna help it hold water. But this, just water just seeps right out of a clay pot. So I stick my finger down in there. The soil's still kind of cool and not dried out, but it's getting there where it, they could use water. By the end of the day, they'll be super dry. Now look at this one. This one's super dry. Not super dry, but it needs water. And the other factor that tells you that you might need to water something more is the bigger the plant. If the plant has a lot of leaves or foliage, as they say, then it's going to take up a lot more water, obviously. If you have something tiny in it, it, it won't require as much water as quickly. So anyways, that could use water. This is dill. That's dill. And I think this is hyssop. But all my tags got mixed up, so I'm not exactly sure what it is. This is pretty dry. You can see that. Needs water. I'll I'll see to that. This is catnip. It's huge, big, very big. Dry. This is um, basil, sweet basil. So is this? Smells great. Smells amazing. These are all flowers. They were getting ready to bud and give flowers, but I decided to pinch them off to make them bushier, make a bushier plant. And I had forgotten about doing that. It gives you more flowers because of the it, it, it makes, instead of one main flowering stem, it'll branch off. See, I cut the main stem off, if you can see. I pinched that off and now it's making two. And even more down here. So it just gives you more places. It's like if you cut off one fa faucet, then it makes more. And I just did that maybe like four days ago. And see, I, was, I cut that part off of right here and then it makes, it makes the plant go and grow f further down because it's like you cut off its pathway. So same over here. So those would be really, really pretty. I'm looking forward to them. They're, these are called Cosmos, Cosmos, um, but I've never grown this kind before. I grew a kind called Sensational last year, which is a, a, a mix of colors. I'm just picking these weeds out. That's the thing about weeds too, if you ever grow a garden, it's best to get weeds when they're really small. 
Just get them really small when you don't have to fight with them. And they just pick right out. And plus, they haven't had a chance to rob your plants of nutrients. And I heard also that some weeds, some plants, which weeds are plants, whether we like it or not, but they, um, they send out hormones or some kind of signal and it kills other plants. It kills off their competition. Isn't that crazy? So let's see what else is interesting. Something else new that I'm growing is these ground cherries. They're finally starting to get some size on them. They take a long time to germinate, kind of like pepper plants. And um, they are finally getting some size on them. I put them, see I've got it in that great big pot because it gets bigger the more room you give it. And the bigger it is, the more fruit it'll give you. So these ground cherries should be interesting. They should be really interesting. I put two in here because they both neither one of them was looking like they were guaranteed to live. Because my little nephew, he was watering them. And he's he's young, very young. And he just dumped water on them and they got pummeled. But they seem to have recovered. Here's another. I planted a lot of them because I never grew these before, but they're supposed to be so good. People are just like, oh my goodness, yum, yummy, yummy, yummy. And then they get like a handful of them a day. I don't want a handful of them a day. If they're that good, I want a lot. So, so I have one, two, three, four. Be five if I get that one out of there before it gets its roots entangled. And then there's a sixth one over there. And then I have four in the, the raised beds way over there. All right, so yeah. So we're getting some strawberries. These are really super good. And I see there's more coming. I think I might've made a mistake. Like once your plants start giving fruit, I understand it's not good to give them nitrogen. And I did that. And it greened up a little bit, but it changed the fruit. So nitrogen is for leaf growth, growth and then the other nutrients um, potassium and uh, potassium and phosph phosphorus. They're good for fruiting and root roots and stuff like that. But so I, I didn't really have all that in mind, and so the fruit just kind of looks kind of small and dryy, dryish. Those are some runners that are coming off. These are the potatoes. I need to go ahead and. Put, pack more dirt in here because the higher up you pack your dirt the more layers of potatoes you have you just put the old potatoes in there with eyes on them potatoes with eyes on them that's all that you do you put them in dirt cover them up and then they grow a plant those eyes turn into a plant and when the plant and you cover them up with more dirt you know however high you can go and then uh, when the plant starts to die, then you can dig up the potatoes and eat them. And they even store for a very long time. All those potatoes were potatoes I grew last year. And I just didn't eat them. And so they grew eyes and I put them back in the pot. So that's the way it goes. This uh, blueberry plant is looking pretty good. It's the only one, I had three of them, but it's the only one that really did well after the winter because we had a late frost and the frost didn't really affect this one as, as badly. More flowers over here, Cosmos and Xenias. Anyway, I grew a variety of Cosmos, I started to say before, called Sensational last year. And it's just a mix of pinks and uh, red and white. And it's just a mix of colors and purples or lavender or whatever, but um, it was super pretty. It was very, very pretty, the cosmos. But this time I, I'm growing different kinds, mostly pinks and stuff I'm attracted to. So we'll see, it'll be a different display of color.
And same thing with the zinnias. I'm growing more spe specific variety of zinnias. So, and I just stuck a little cosmos in the middle there just for fun because I had an extra one. All right, peas, peas, bush peas. Now, there's just like with tomatoes, you have a, a comparison, a comparable to a determinate and an indeterminate variety. They get big and tall, like those peas, or they stay small like a bush, and they give you one crop instead of peas that will keep going until the plant dies. I mean, instead of the tall ones, the regular size ones. But these bush varieties, they call them bush because they stay small like a bush. And um, if they, won't, they weren't supposed to need a trellis. But as you can see, see how tall that is? I just, I just put that little teepee and twine type of an apparatus to give it some support because it was flopping all the way over. Last year, when I grew these tall kind, and in the beginning when they were smaller and they flopped over about this size, um, aphids crawled up there and just decimated it. And the ones that I got off the ground, that didn't happen to them. So I, I staked these pretty early. And then when I saw that these looked like they were needing staking, I put it off for a little bit, but then I finally did it yesterday. The younger you give them the stakes, the better. Because you see these little tendrils they wind around, these wind around everything, wind around each other. You end up having to break them apart and separate it all out. It's just very simple. If you give it something in the beginning to crawl up and then allow it to crawl up it. Now there's a whole story behind these things. These are called Lysianthus. It's a flower that has a reputation of being very difficult to grow. And even a lot of flower sellers People who sell flowers and make a living at it, make money from it. They don't grow these from seeds because they are very uh, slow growing, difficult to take care of, temperamental, you know, all that. So they grow them from plugs. So I think the plugs are probably, the plugs probably come about this size and they'll just grow. They'll just buy trays and trays of those plugs from commercial growers. But it's hard to just get a few. You, you have to be like a farmer, a flower farmer, in order to make it worth your while for how many they make you buy. But if you just want a few, you, you know, you can't really buy a few. So if you want them and you don't want a whole, whole bunch of them, you can try and grow them from seed. But they are very difficult. And just, I don't even have to say more than to tell you that I planted over 450 and this is how many that lived to, to make it outside and to start to grow. And you see that little teeny itty bitty one. So I planted them inside, I think it was like January 15th, January 5th or January 15th, something like that. And um, they took a while and then they started sprouting super duper tiny. And so you think from January to all this time, your our last frost date was uh, the, the last of April, at the end of April. So from January to the end of April, you have to nurse these plants inside, turn the lights on, turn the lights off, water them, make sure they're not getting too much water, too little water, uh, keep the temperature, the right temperature, or they do this thing called rosetting which the which is they go into a resting phase and they and they won't bloom for you when they're supposed to. And the reason why you have to start them so early is because look how long it took them just to get to this size since January. You'll miss their growing season if you don't start them early enough. It's like an elephant elephant that's pregnant for a long time. So in um maybe like early March, they were taking up space and it was time for me to start my other uh, plants. And they were taking up space in my growing area inside with the lights and the table and everything. So, and, and they were dying. 
So I just took the ones that were left, which was probably maybe 20% of them were still left alive. And I put them in a, a container with a lid over it, a see-through lid. I taped it down and I put them inside that planter. And I just forgot about them. And they stayed out here for a couple of months and it was still cold and it was still snowing and it was still frost and, and they lived. And then one week, um, I, I just decided to check on them and, and they were still out here and they were still green and alive. And the reason why I put them out is because I was afraid they were going to all rosette. They were taking up space. They were hard to water. They were just hard to look after and hard to take care of. And I was just like, forget it. Put them out there. If they live, they live, they die, they die. And, um, so the humidity inside the cover thing that I put was enough to keep them moist. And then after I saw they were alive, I was like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go check on them and, you know, make sure they get water. And so one week I was working and I didn't do it. I didn't go out and check on them like, like my mind was telling me to go check on them. And when I came out here, half of them, half of the ones that have lived through all that time died. They had died and I couldn't get them back. So the ones that I could get back, I put in these pots. I prepared some pots for them, put them in there. And I think only one of them has died since then. This little bitty one was looking like it was going to die. But then it put on new growth. And you can see even the part that was dying at the bottom. And then it put on new growth. And now it's doing great. So they're starting to shoot up now. They... I wanted them out of the house because they were going into a resting phase or they would go into a resting phase because the house was way, way too warm and they, they need a cold season in order to do well. And it was way too warm in the house. That's why I, another part of why I put them outside. Anyway, so the peas, these pretty little flowers, beautiful little flowers become peas. Alright, they become peas. Been harvesting my lettuce just because when something is ready, you better get it before something else does. I don't know what that fly is doing in there. Very annoying. Um, but I harvest it and clean it real good and take it in and eat it. Same thing with this. I harvested some. I also put some oregano in there because I didn't have anywhere else to put it. So I put some there and I put some in with the potato, the tomatoes, t tomato plants. So, yep. Probably need to go ahead and just harvest the rest of them. I don't know, I'm thinking about maybe juicing them or whatever. Here's romaine. Once something is ready, you're just asking for something to eat it. So you gotta harvest it or for it to go bad or whatever. They're beautiful. Tastes great, just like lettuce from the store. All right, I think that's everything. I, oh, the only thing I missed, onions. I planted those. They've been planted for a long time too, inside. And then I, people say you can't transplant certain stuff. I think that I did, you know. I transplanted onions. I transplanted corn. That's a weed. But I'm going to continue the video. I'm not going to take time and get it right now. So, here's some stuff I didn't really have room for. These are more of those um, ground cherries. This is a sunflower. I think a dwarf sunflower. These are all ground cherries. Um, so I was talking about the ground cherry. Let me finish. The ground cherry grows in a, a husk, like a tomatillo, if you know what a tomatillo is. And they also called, they're also called Chinese lanterns because the husk that it grows in kind of looks like a Chinese paper lantern. And they're something like a tomato, but they're... Tomato is a fruit, so this is a 
something like a tomato, but it's sweet. It's a sweet, tangy taste. And they're supposed to be so delicious. And so I'm gonna try it. These are more potatoes. There's a pepper plant there that's getting some flowers on it. So you can see that. A sunflower hiding back there. A sunflower right there. And some zinnias. Hmm, interesting. Little strawberries. Uh, this is maybe a pumpkin or a bottle gourd. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I, I just had it extra and I threw it in there. This is a tomato that needs to get pruned. It's got a lot of leaves on the ground. And I just noticed today, flowers. Flowers mean fruit. This is some sort of a tomato. I planted some tomatillos, but my labels, my stuff fell over. My labels got lost. So we'll see what they are when they grow. This one has like curly leaf syndrome. I don't know what that's about. Anyway, flowers on there too. Just the beginnings of some flowers. I, I plant, like I said, I planted, um, there's some lavender in between there because I didn't know what else to do with it basil, oregano, a sage. Uh, sage plants get huge. I don't know what I was thinking. I'm going to have to end up pulling those up. If they, When they start getting big, I'm going to pull them up. Just kill them, I guess. Because I already have some in pots. More toma tomatoes and hopefully tomatillos. Hopefully some cherry tomatoes in here. I know for sure this one's a brandy wine. And I believe that one's a beef steak. As for the other ones, we're gonna have to see what they are. Um, more tomatoes over here, look, flowers. So I'm gonna have to start thinking about how, to, how I'm gonna stake them up. I need some water here. This is, all five of these are tomatoes. This is the brassicas, which have been growing since before the last frost. There's some dill that's seeded, obviously from last year, because dill was growing in this bed as well last year. So there's several sprigs of dill trying to come up. These are Brussels sprouts, these four, one, two, three, four, and that one. And I believe that's a broccoli. This is a collard green, some uh, kohlrabi and broccoli back there. I don't know what this is. This could be a collard green. I don't know what it is. These are all collard greens. And some weeds trying to grow in between there. Looks like some, uh, maybe some parsley or something. Anyway, and some weeds that I need to get to. These need harvesting. These are ready for a good harvesting. All right, here's another little interesting story. This right here is a very old um, okra plant that should be way bigger than what it is. But I did not harden them off. I did not introduce them slowly to the outdoor sun. I just planted them out here. I had 16 of them. Only four of them have lived. This one, this one, this one and this one lived. And as you can see, the new ones that I planted, like that one, are all the way caught up pretty much to plants that were, you know, eight weeks older than it. 10 weeks older than it. So do not fail to harden off your plants. You will regret it. So I, plant, I planted new ones so you can see they've come up and so don't waste your time all these are new and they're the same size as the one that's been there that one's been there so rookie mistake learn my lesson here's uh onions looks like something's been gnawing off the top of them gnawing off the top of those but not messing with those so whatever more onions planted those from seeds way back when it's funny how certain areas of a bed grow better than other areas. Weird. 
or it could be that I planted the biggest, no, nah, that's just positional. This is a bunch of um, watermelon plants. They're getting bigger. Um, they're probably too close together. And I don't know what I'm gonna do. Am I gonna let them spill out of the bed? Am I gonna let them crowd all up in the bed? I'm gonna put some like maybe landscape fabric right around the outside to let them grow on. I don't know what I'm gonna do. We'll have to see. Oh, green beans. Oh, look, somebody's dying. Somebody's dying. You are dying. I don't know what happened. I'm gonna pull these leaves off. Maybe it can live. If it's not having to support suffering leaves. I got enough of them, I won't really worry about it. There's ants in here too. That's never a good sign. The ants bring aphids and stuff. But anyway, the leaves kind of look like uh, sweet potato leaves. Now here's where the other ground cherries are. That's a cucumber that I just stuck there. I don't know why. Uh, ground cherries. I'll, I'll probably end up pulling it up. Basil. And some lavender. Why I did that, I don't know. I just had extra plants. That's a ground cherry. It's tiny. This one's bigger. I have two different kinds. The labels came out, so I'm not... No, I didn't label them properly, so I don't know which ones are which. That was silly. I gotta work on that. It's all different kind of um, tomatoes from here back. So I should have lots of tomatoes. Pepper patch is over here. Um, now these I did label because I bought these. This, this, these six. One, two, three, four, five, six. I bought those. The other ones came from seed. So these have labels. A hot banana. I don't know if it's ready yet. I don't know what color it's supposed to be when it's done. Oh, let me see on the package. That's the same color as on the package. It might be done. It's pretty big. I could pull them off. The other advantage of pulling stuff off when it's ready is that your plant keeps producing when you do that. If I can get this off of here. There. So I'll take these in and be my, besides strawberries, a, a strawberry here and a strawberry there, and lettuce, that'll be the first harvest. So... Those first two are hot bananas, and I didn't get anything hotter than a hot banana. That's a sweet banana and bell peppers, red bells. And so that's what I got, three hot bananas and three, no, th three hot bananas, one sweet banana, and two bells, which don't be fooled by red bell, because if you pick a red bell, before it turns red, then that's what a green bell pepper is. That's all. And we'll have to see what these surprise peppers are. We don't know. We do not know. Uh, cucumbers. I saw some flowers. <clears throat> the first flowers are starting on there. So we should be getting cucumbers soon. And some of these might be pumpkins. I wanted the, Let's see what this is. This is the bottle gourd. That's the bottle gourd. That's probably some sort of a pumpkin. You can tell it resembles the cucumbers very much. All right, well, I guess that's the tour. The only thing, okay, you might have noticed that I added new beds. Huh, bowed wood. I added this one. I added this long one. 
that's like uh, about 15 feet by three feet. And then that one in the far corner where the watermelons were, that's three by three. And that bed is also new, this last four by four where the onions and the okra are. That is new this year, four by four. And this is the original garden, raised bed garden from last year. Okay. I think that was it. The only thing I didn't tell you about is those are just some flowers over there. Some zinnias and a little thing of Cosmo sit next to it. And to cover up that unsightly utility corner and then this defunct direct TV satellite. So not today, but I'm gonna come out here and make it pretty out here. Arrange things pretty and put things away and make it, you know, so to be attractive. And, and the flowers, when the flowers come in, that will help. So here it is. I'm gonna, I plan on painting that table. Repainting that white part, that's white, because it's getting a little rusty spots, because I got it at Hobby Lobby. So it wasn't very high quality and it only cost a hundred and something dollars. I think it was cost like $125. And then the table is made out of some kind of pressed wood or laminated wood. So it's buckling because it keeps a lot of water on it, but I'm going to paint it. We'll just see what it does. Anyway, that's it. We can end on these pretty little flowers. And God bless everybody. So remember, seek for humility, search for it. Search for pride in yourself and repent of it at a time when the world is celebrating uh, pride for sin. You know, don't just be Sodom and Gomorrah, be proud of it. And that is just, it's deadly. Pride is deadly. No matter what, we, we have to resist, resist being proud because God resists the proud. God resist the proud. We have to remember his word. It's a lamp to our feet. Resist pride. It's no good because we don't, we don't really have anything to be proud of because we're, number one, all by ourselves, we're wicked. Unless we're following the word of God, we are absolutely wicked. And we, we can't do anything without him. All we do by ourselves is just go astray. It's just like if you turn a three-year-old loose in the kitchen, there's nothing they can make but a mess. And that's the truth. And if you just realize the truth about who you are, who we are, then you'll know that there's nothing to be proud of. Why is that even in our vocabulary? Why is pride even anything that we're entertaining? What is that? What is pride? It's never mentioned as anything in the, in the Bible, but as a negative thing. So it's something of the earth, sensual and dead, devilish. A little update on the apple tree. I planted uh, four, four seeds. And this one is the only one that's left. So since he's li he's living, I'm gonna let him live. I'm gonna read about read up on how to make it into a dwarf tree. It came from seed, so it's, you never know what you're gonna get. Okay, and I also planted my um, oh that needs water. Anyway, I planted the true seed that I got from the potato plants last year, and they looked weird, so I didn't even bother planting them. And plus. This, I, I have a tendency toward idolatry. 
putting things ahead of God. And the garden is one of those things that can, you know, pull me in and I can just stay out here all day and do stuff and, and neglect stuff that I should be doing, like, you know, my prayer time, study time, um, ministering, all those things, teaching. So I got to watch that. So that's another reason why I didn't fool with the potatoes. And plus, as you you look around at all this stuff, because I didn't have any dirt, you know, all, all our dirt is clay. And plus, you know, I'm not digging up the lawn because I don't own this place. Um, but I had all dirt is expensive. So all this you see, some of it is from last year, but some I bought, like especially for the new beds had to buy dirt, wood, all that stuff. All the stuff costs money. So that's another thing, you know, a lot of money that I should have spent doing something else. But now that I've done this, you know, I'm not gonna say go do evil and good will come from it, but you know, this is, I, I shouldn't have spent all this money. But now that I did, you know, I'm, I'm gonna take care of it the best I can. I didn't spend nearly as much money as I did last year. Last year was crazy. But I pray the Lord makes something good out of my mistake. If this was my house, no problem. But this isn't my house. And, you know, I just created something that'll make, that'll be even harder for me to leave because I like it so much. So, mm. so hopefully the Lord will allow me to, my plan, if it can happen, is when I leave, be like the children of Israel, take all my stuff with me. Uh, pack up them beds, pack up all that stuff, buy some sod, fix the ground where they were, and be out. All right, keep me in your prayers. I'll keep you in your prayers. The Lord continues to chasten me because, you know, I constantly need reminding that I am nothing. Constantly. Well, God bless. <laughs>